This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. We are approximately 26 seconds away from picking up the countdown at the T minus nine minute point. Nine minutes remaining between now and 7 a.m. when we expect to have a liftoff of America's first space shuttle. Uh, the launch team has been briefed on the way in which a halt can be called to the countdown. During the final nine minutes of the uh, countdown, and we're coming out, we're at the minus nine minutes and counting. Has been the launch events are being controlled by the ground launch sequencer now that has been initiated, and that will be in control up to T minus 25 seconds when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is a part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers, which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed. The primary job of the computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements are satisfactory. The primary chase aircraft have taken off. Uh, a third T-38 will take off at the T-minus five minute mark. The timing of this plane, uh, a tight, tight window that a 15 second delay would mean that they would not be in the proper position at the, the late T-38 supersonic trainers have such critical timing because of the small fuel load that they carry. T-minus 7 minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. Approximately 40 seconds away from movement of the orbiter access arm. Uh, this is the final arm which was to be moved out of the way to provide for the orbiter uh, to clear the tower properly. Uh, this may be a very uh, interesting launch to watch from the standpoint that the orbiter is able to translate uh, slightly horizontally as it begins to lift off and it also does a roll maneuver uh, which will uh, translate the, uh, the orbiter sort of on its back as it goes uh, towards the uh, proper inclination to the equator. T minus seven minutes, seven seconds and counting. T minus seven minutes and counting. And we have retraction of the orbiter access arm, beginning to move the back first uh, away from the orbiter and then to swing away. This was the walkway attached to the service structure and used by the crew to walk to the orbiter. The crew has been advised uh, to lower their helmet visors. Very slow movement by the orbiter access arm. T minus six minutes, 29 seconds, and counting. The crew is beginning the APU pre-start. Uh, this the Start begins at the five minute point in the countdown. T minus six minutes, 15 seconds, and counting. The APUs are turbine devices fueled by hydrazine, which provides hydraulic power to change the angle of the engines and the flight surfaces on the orbiter. T minus five minutes, 59 seconds, and counting. Pilot uh, Bob Crippen had begun that APU pre-start, which uh, started about 48 seconds from now. Uh, the the, the development of flight instrumentation, which measures the stresses on the orbiter during flight, have been turned on, and recorders uh, uh, store information for playback after landing. 5.30, uh, five minutes and 30 seconds, Mark, Roger, and Trent Winnigan, Mark. And, uh, uh, Bob Bob pilot Bob Crippen has signified the auxiliary power units are ready to be started. Flight to your stored program command. T-minus five minutes, 15 Market. seconds, and counting. Coming up on the five-minute point. Four, 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 three, three, two, one. Mark, T-minus five minutes, and counting. We have a goal for APU start. You start the course. The uh, start is in work. The this is the start sequence. The final chase plane has taken off from Patrick Air Force Base. T minus four minutes, 42 seconds, and counting. T minus 
4 minutes 30 seconds and counting. Go ahead. Once we get the APU start, we have a total of 12 minutes of hydrogen supply for running the APU prior to a liftoff. Everything going very easily in this count. The APU start is complete. T minus 4 minutes 10 seconds. As preparation for main engine ignition, the main fuel valve heaters have been turned off. T minus 3 minutes 57 seconds and counting. The final helium purge on the shuttle main engine has been started in preparation for engine start. Liquid oxygen replenish system has been turned off in preparation for pressurization of the tank uh, for the launch. T minus 3 minutes 35 seconds and counting. The Elevon speed brake and rudder are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to assure that they'll be ready for use in flight. T minus 3 minutes 20 seconds and counting. The shuttle is now on internal power. However, the fuel cells are still receiving their fuel from the ground support system for one more additional minute. T-minus three minutes, T-minus three minutes, and counting. The engine gimbal, our movement check is underway to ensure they're ready for flight control. T-minus two minutes, 52 seconds, the lock valve on the external tank has been closed, pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, the hold capability is limited to three minutes, 36 seconds. T-minus two minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. Fuel cell ground supply of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated and the vehicle is using its onboard supply. T minus 2 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. T minus 2 minutes, 15 seconds. The pressure in the lock tank is at flight pressure. Coming up on just 2 minutes away from launch. T-minus two minutes, Mark, and counting. Here for launch, for lift up. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. T-minus one minute, 50 seconds, and counting. We're bigger for lift up. Smooth sailing, baby. Chuck Hannon is just out for a few gas Smooth sailing, baby, to turn on John Young and Bob Trippin. T-minus one minute, 35 seconds, and counting. Minus one minute, 20 seconds, and counting. We can see the purges of the main engine uh, as we prepare for ignition. T minus one minute, 10 seconds, and counting. Liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. T minus one minute, mark, and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression water will be armed at just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. T minus 45 seconds and counting. T minus 40 seconds and counting. The development flight instrumentation recorders are on. T minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant sense sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5.
Houston, you're going throttle up. Roger, go throttle up. Roger, Columbia, on a nice ride. You're lofting a little bit, so you'll probably be slightly high at staging. Coming up on go, no go. Columbia, you're in negative seats. Uh, that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia, the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Columbia, you're go for SRB staff. Standing by for SRB SEP confirmation. <laughs> Roger on the set, Columbia. <laughs> Confirm solid rocket booster set. Stay down for this year. Mark uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. On, on board guidance is converging this program. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. Mark, 2 minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia now 39 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, 2 minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia, Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Columbia now has two engine rotor yeah, capability. Roger. Three minutes. Young and Crippen really moving out now. Velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. Mark uh, 3 minutes 15 seconds, Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles down range, velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. Mark uh, 3 minutes 30 seconds, Columbia now 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles down range. Mark, uh, 3 minutes 40 seconds, uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia, Governor Green to continue. Mark, 3 minutes 55 seconds, standing by for a press D'Amico, which uh, says Columbia should lose one engine. Columbia, stand by, press D'Amico. Columbia continues flying forward, coming up on the return. Press for Miko. Roger, press for Miko. Mark, uh, four minutes, eight. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark, negative return. And your revamp right. is good. Mark, uh, four minutes, 25. Uh, okay. Five seconds. Sure with, that. Their power. with that call up, okay. kept up. Capcom Brandon Stein, Columbia now committed to space travel. Young and Crippen can no longer turn around and return to the launch site. Columbia Houston, uh, we're showing both Ohm's PC transducers off scale high. Mark, uh, four minutes, uh, 45 seconds. The uh, flash evaporator is activated on board to cool. Uh, Columbia. Roger, standby, we'll keep an eye on it. Mark, four minutes, 56 seconds. Columbia is lofting early in the second stage, is now being taken out of the trajectory as programmed. Columbia now 74 nautical miles in altitude, 181 nautical miles. Glad you're enjoying it. Mark, uh, 5 minutes 15 seconds. Uh, Columbia now 75 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 202 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 11,000 feet per second. Uh, a status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia Houston, you're going 530, me go, 8 plus 3, 4. Mark, uh, 5 minutes, uh, 40 seconds, that call up from Capcom okay, Planet 9 says uh, Columbia is projecting down. navigation and engine performance. Roger, good. Columbia, reading you loud and clear. Okay, you're clear, a little weak. Mark, uh, 5 minutes, 55 and seconds. Columbia, we just switched over to Bermuda, voice should be getting better here in a second. Uh, okay, okay, that's good. Six minutes, uh, Columbia now 76 nautical miles in altitude, 280 nautical miles out of range, velocity now 13,000 feet per second. Columbia, you're 
Columbia, Houston, uh, could I have the cryo heaters, please? And Columbia, your single engine rota. Uh, Mark, uh, six minutes, 25 seconds. That call up from Capcom, Brandon Stein, says that if two-engine failure occurred, Columbia is capable of an emergency landing at Rotor Naval Air Station, Spain. Mark, uh, six minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia pitching over now, diving to increase velocity, decrease altitude, giving Columbia her most favorable attitude. Columbia now 72 nautical miles in altitude, 373 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading uh, 16,400 feet per second. Standing by for a single engine, uh, Preston Miko call up from Capcom, Brandon Stein. Columbia, your single engine, press for Miko. Mark, 7 minutes, 20 uh, seconds. That report that. says a young and Crippen can achieve orbital insertion even if two engines go out. Mark, uh, 7 minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia, 67 nautical miles in altitude, 485 nautical miles down range. G-Force is building for young and Crippen now up to 3Gs. Mark, uh, 7 minutes, uh, 45 seconds. Columbia's main engine slowly being throttled back now. Should be throttled at 65% at six seconds before main engine cutoff. Status check in the control center. Columbia Houston, you're going eight. Mark, eight minutes, four right, seconds. Down, Columbia now 63 nautical miles in altitude, 606 nautical miles down range. Columbia now 63 nautical miles in altitude, 650 nautical miles down range. Standing by now for main engine cutoff. Port Miko, 25670, up at 223 per second. Roger, Columbia, Miko. Confirm shutdown. Uh, Columbia, the gem of this new ocean now in space, not yet in orbit. Uh, now standing by now for external tank separation. Okay, we had that. Roger, we confirm the set, Columbia. Confirm external tank separation. Columbia now performing an evasive maneuver. Moving below and beyond and translating the north of the external tank. Uh, Young should see it moving away out this window. Uh, Seconds, go no go status check and mission control for the first Ohms burn. Give it a go. Columbia Houston, your go for nominal Ohms 1 and for APU shutdown on time. Mark 9 minutes 55 seconds. Columbia now maneuvering to its Ohms 1 burn attitude. And using the two 6,000 pound thrust engine, the Ohms 1 will be positive grade, moving Columbia forward and higher on her flight path. Placing Columbia in orbit. Standing by for ignition. 10 minutes, 22 seconds. Columbia, 67 nautical miles in altitude. 1160 nautical miles down range. Columbia, they're looking good to us. A status check in the control center. Columbia, 
you, Houston. Uh, we have 40 seconds to LOS. Configure LOS. You're looking good burning over the hill. We'll see you at Madrid. Okay, 40 seconds to go. We're in an ISS by 42 right now. Roger. Houston, uh, 12 minutes mission elapsed time. Uh, we've had loss of signal with Columbia through Bermuda. The next station to acquire will be Madrid. Still receiving data, however, in the control center. Uh, right at the uh, shutdown, they saw the, uh, or right at uh, loss of signal, they saw the shutdown of the uh, homes. 